Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this does not work without you guys. So let's get open for business. And let's wake up the football gods here on this Thursday. Wake up, guys. Don't, don't be sleeping on me now. <laughs> we need you more than ever. It is already Thursday of hate week. And I hate to say it, but I've been handcuffed. I've been warned by the authorities to take it easy on the Eagle fans. That I've been trolling Philly 500 just too damn much. I got to tell you. It's sad that Philly 500 can't take the heat. That he's scared. And he's saying he's scared. That's all right. It's okay. This is the biggest game of the season. Season hasn't gone the way we wanted. We know that. But right now is an opportunity for redemption. And a lot of people have been saying, you know, I want the Cowboys to lose because I want to be without Jason Garrett. Well, you know, we all know that Jason Garrett is Jerry Jones' pet, whatever you want to call him. He's his pet. He is his son that I guess he wanted. He is the guy that he believes in, and he's the guy he wants to see win the Super Bowl. And we've heard a sea change of talk from you got to win the big one to NFC playoff, I mean championship, to now hearing we'll evaluate at the end of the season. Yeah. In the meantime, we got two games to the regular season that determined whether or not this season is a success or a failure. We got the Eagles. We got Dak Prescott that we're finding out about his AC joint that, you know, up in here, which is very painful, but not like the rotator cuff, um, that's sore. Now, Dak Prescott is a warrior. In fact, this is the first time in the four years that he has been the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, that he has been limited in practice at all. And that goes through... The fracture, no fracture last week that goes through him hitting his hand on a helmet last year, I believe, against the Redskins. Excuse me, two years ago against the Redskins. And I'm sure being battered and bruised against games like the Falcons. He's a warrior. He is built like a tank. He is a tough guy. He will play. The question will be is how well will he play? We don't know. He's probably not going to do any throwing until Saturday. Now, if there's any good news is Zeke Elliott has East Eden on the Philadelphia Eagles, averaging in the five games he's played 115 yards. All victories for the Dallas Cowboys. The two games that he didn't, well, we lost those two. We lost those two. One, when he was suspended. Second one. Technically, we were, had already clinched the division, so I don't know if you count that one or not. You know, it's kind of like Philly 500 doesn't count the victory that we had on their Super Bowl season. So it's however you want to look at it, okay? But I just put the facts out there. So the team will get back on the field again today. Now, understand, at this time of year, practice isn't really practice like you may think of, like, say, in high school, where you're wearing pads and stuff. In the NFL, you only have 11 padded practices during the regular season, and they have to be done by week 11. So basically, it's helmet, T-shirt, and you're running around. That's it. But he won't be practicing until probably Saturday will be when he starts throwing. And you can best believe that the training staff is working on that shoulder. They're icing, they're stretching, they're heating, they're doing everything else. I'm sure he's going to get some pain meds and stuff. He's going to be taking anti-inflammatories to get the swelling down. Now, he hurt that, I believe, on the second drive of the game um, when he ended up running and Clay Matthews kind of threw him to the ground. The interesting thing is, as I've watched the clip, he pops right back up goes back to the huddle, he doesn't even shake the arm, although he looks like he's wincing a little bit, but he shows no after effects from that point. 
And when you are in the heat of battle, your adrenaline's pumping. You don't really think about it. But what happens is, unfortunately, you get swelling later. And that's the issue, because when you have the swelling, that's where the pain and stuff comes in there. And that's where if you just start exercising, for example, and haven't exercised in a long time, you're sore that first day, but it's the second day after that you're really, really sore. And you got to move around so that way you get rid of that lactic acid that's in your system. And more times than not, you have NFL players that on Monday literally can't move around. They have a hard time getting out of bed because of the pains and everything else, especially with older players. That it's really not until Tuesday or Wednesday before you start getting movement around. Um, John Riggins, for example used to be in traction all week pretty much before games as he got older and that's just the nature of the beast this time of year everybody's injured it's just a matter of to what uh, severity it is and can they play through that football it's war flat out it's war and you look at now you know where we have John Lee with a strained pec muscle. You look at, of course, Lyle Collins who had uh, the ankle injury, and you look at um, Tyron Smith who's now got a sty in his eye and his eyes closed and had knee injuries, and he's got, of course, the elbow that's been you know bad for a couple of years. You are just beaten, battered, and bruised at this time of year. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But I will say that the Cowboys are less battered right now, depending on Dak Prescott, than the Eagles are. The Eagles team has been just hit. And I'm going to give you Eagles a little bit of a break on the season because I told you, Philly, I told you because you had one of the oldest rosters in the NFL. I told you, seventh oldest, that it's hard to keep old guys on the field. And that is the problem for your team. Your team has lost everybody. And your defense stinks, Philly. They stink. If there's any saving grace is Philadelphia Eagles defense has been bad. How bad? Let's take a look at what they've done the last few weeks. Um, the Eagles, let me shrink this down a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see the, read this very well or not. But let's go through what their defense have done for the Eagles the last three weeks. They played the Miami Dolphins, the New York Giants, and the Washington Redskins. Three cellar dwellers. Three teams with, what, three wins? The Miami Dolphins have been playing better later in the season than they did at the beginning of the season. But you don't expect to, if you have playoff and Super Bowl aspirations, to lose to the Miami Dolphins. And more importantly, you don't expect to give up 409 yards of offense to the Miami Dolphins. You Eagles keep talking about who Carson Wentz doesn't have to throw to. Okay, I get you. You have Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, Fitzmagic for about three games a year. Fitzmagic threw for you guys for 351 yards. 351 yards against your defense. Miami Dolphins. They ended up rushing for only 58, but when you're getting that kind of money passing, who needs to run the football? And that ended up being a 37-31 loss. And mind you, Eagles ended up having two breaks in that game. First play of the game, I believe it was an interception or a fumble, and you got the ball on the 18-yard line of Miami. And coming out the second half, they onside kicked it, giving you the ball in great field position again. And you still lost to the Miami Dolphins. Let's go to the New York Giants in bad weather. You got the win in overtime. New York Giants only had 55 yards to your 418. But Eli Manning hadn't sniffed the field since early in the season, I think week two. Still gave up 182 yards to him, passing 73, 17 points, and had to go to overtime to win, in which case the clock expired, and it should have actually been a delay of game on the game-winning TD. Talking about the Giants that haven't won since, like, week two. 
or was it week three? I don't know. It was early. Then we go to the Washington Redskins. You got the win 37-27. Congratulations. You know, we found out that Carson Wentz is clutch two weeks in a row. The Redskins, though, still, with Dwayne Haskins, with a team that fired their coach, had 352 yards of offense. 352. You let Dwayne Haskins, a guy who, a few weeks ago, they weren't sure he was going to be an NFL quarterback and were thinking that maybe, just maybe, they need to draft another quarterback. That's his career high for yardage, 251 yards. And he had that team rolling. They just didn't have enough horses to finish the race. Now, I'm going to give you credit for winning two or three games because we did lose to the Jets. I, I get that. You lost to the Dolphins. But against these teams that I believe are 8-31, and 8-31, and 31, your defense has given up 87 points in those three games. 29 points a game. If Dak Prescott is anywhere near his norm, if the Dallas Cowboys show up, they should ha- shouldn't have a problem scoring points on this team. Now, I may be wrong. I'm not saying that they will. I'm just pointing out that the Eagles' defense, their secondary, has been bad. I mean really, really bad. They're better at stopping the run, but that passing game, Dak, I hope that shoulder heals. But anyway... I got to go load up these bookcases. I'm heading down the country and uh, I'll be installing those and then driving back. So I'm going to be on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. So, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And, uh, Philly, stop calling the police on me, man. Come on, man. If you can't stand the heat, get out the YouTube kitchen. I'll see you soon.